Hello, hello, hello! How's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing today? It is a wonderful Tuesday morning. Actually, it's raining out, but it's it's kind of nice. It's that it's, you know when it's a nice hot rain out. I, I I like those days. Ah, so how's everyone doing today? Hopefully the audio is fine. I, I had to I found my other lab mic, so hopefully the audio is okay today. Um. Yes, it's that time. We are unboxing uh, the Bamboo Lab Carbon. And I seen a little bit in the uh, the, pr the pre-stream chat, um, some people were questioning if this was unopened. Like, they're like, why is he lifting up a uh, an empty box? This box ain't empty. It's it's 24 kilograms of printer. Well, 23 point something. But it's unopened. I haven't unboxed this at all. Uh, we are going into this somewhat blind. Um, I did get a little uh, quick read through with the Bamboo Lab team uh, just to make sure I had everything set up. I have their slicer installed. I got their phone app. Uh, we are going to have to do a software update on it, but it is what it is. So what is the Bamboo Lab? Um, the X1 Carbon. There's a link in the description. It brings you to their website. For those that don't know what this printer is, there's quite a bit of hype on this. On Twitter, people who have these units already for review are showing off videos of them printing fast. Joel's already done his review. Modbot, a few other people. Um, but what this is, this is a Core XY printer developed by Bamboo Lab. They're a... Do I got to restart? Oh, I got to restart the camera. One second here, guys. It's doing the thing. So while that's going on, we're just going to talk. So what the Bamboo Lab is, is uh, they're a new company. And the X1 is their new printer. There's different variants of the X1. Uh, there's the carbon, there's the base model, and then there's um, the combo. So the combo is the, ah, it's still doing it. What the heck's going on here? Doo -doo -doo. So the X1 is the printer itself. The upgraded variant, which is the variant that I have is the carbon. Um, and it comes with things such as it has a all metal or correction, not all metal. They are all, all metal, but it's got a, um, a hardened nozzle. It also has, um, a metal enclosure versus polycarbonate or plastic. So yeah. Uh, what is the RRP? RRP what's RRP? Um, there we go. I think we're okay. I think the camera's okay now. I think it's the cable. I got to swap out. I keep forgetting to swap out my HDMI cable and try a different one. Um, is this paid placement? No. Um, this printer is, they sent it to me. I didn't, I don't even have a contract or anything. I, I seen people online there. There's like a lot of people thinking that every review is a paid review with this printer so far. Um, everyone is being paid. There's all these contracts. I'm just speaking from my personal experience. Um, somebody got me in touch with them and they're like, Hey, we want to send you the printer. I'm like, cool. And they're like, what's your address? And then they sent the printer. So nothing that I'm saying is paid for. They're not paying me. They sent me the printer, full disclosure. They sent me this printer. They have not asked for it back. This is mine now. Um, but beyond that, that's it. They wanted me to do a Skype call with them before I went live, just to make sure I, I knew what to do. Cause while the hardware is pretty much finalized, they're still working on the software stuff. So um, yeah, we're gonna open this up by the way. I'm gonna dig into it. Um, is this thing gonna be better than a printer? This is the thing. This is a COTS printer. This is commercial off the shelf. So I am approaching this printer different than I would something like a Voron. Vorons are all DIY, okay? How good your Voron is depends a lot on how well you built it. This is a commercial printer. You buy it, you take it out of the box, you print. That's what this is meant for. This is not a tinkerer's printer. This is not a printer you mod. This is, you buy it, you unbox it, you print with it. Um, so, so yeah, so for the price, um, I know people, it is, there's a Kickstarter. The Kickstarter is for pre-sales. If you don't like Kickstarter, which personally, I will admit, I'm not a fan of Kickstarter. Just wait till July. That's when they're aiming to have these retail available. So if you want to purchase this printer and you don't want to deal with Kickstarter, just wait a couple months. You'll be able to buy it on Amazon or their website. Uh, that's what they're looking at. So for this printer retail, for the X1, the base model, which this is the X1 Carbon, the X1 is $9.99. That's the retail. I'm not looking at Kickstarter prices because Kickstarter is a pre-sale. It's a pre-sale. I'm looking at the actual 
MSRP is $9.99, which is currently $100 less than a Prusa Mark III. So that puts it in a pretty competitive price point. Um, the upgraded version, the X1 Carbon, which is the printer that I have here, is $11.49 or $11.99, I can't remember. Um, and then there is the combo. The combo is the X1 Carbon and the AMS, the multi-material setup. That one is $14.99. Now, through the Kickstarter, those are your only three options. So if you wanna buy an AMS by itself, you cannot. If you wanna buy an X1 non-carbon with the AMS, you cannot. Those are the only three tiers. It's X1, X1 Carbon, or X1 Carbon Combo with the AMS. Um, I'm assuming later on you will be able to purchase things like the AMS separately because you can run multiple AMSs. Apparently you can run, it's four colors per AMS and you can run up to 16 colors actually with the system. So you can buy multiple AMSs um, and run them together. Um, but currently I don't think anyone has that. Everyone only has one. Oh, Steve's here, everyone say hi, Steve. So um, this is like, we're going into this no prep. This is the first time we're opening this up. So, so I do have a production unit, but again, um, I'm gonna have to put this on the floor probably. This is a production unit. However, there may be software things. They're still finalizing the software. So while the unit itself is production hardware, the software is still being worked on. Um, I had to download their, I had to put install their app manually through like an APK. I, I couldn't like, but the app isn't on the app store yet. Need a wider lens. Well, the problem is it's literally two feet from the camera. It's a 16 mil lens. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have to put this on the ground. Um, if, by the way, this is 24 kilograms. So it's got some weight, cut the sides. I don't want to damage this box yet. Um, so, oh yeah, they did it the right way. There we go. I like when they do that, where you package it and you put it in a bag so you can just grab the bag and pull it out. Uh, Zombie Hedgehog, five, cheers. How do you like the X1 compared to an Ender 3? Um, this is bigger. That's as far as we've gotten in the unboxing. And it comes fully assembled. That's the only thing I can comment on. This takes less assembly. <laughs> It does come with filament. Okay, so let's see, what do, what do I got in here? So we got four spools of filament. Uh, they're half spools, it looks like. Oh, speaking of filament, um, as always, we do a giveaway on these streams. Um, so every stream we give away a spool of Polymaker filament. Uh, link in the description. Uh, so enter to win for that. Okay, so we do have some filament. Um, I've got bamboo PLA basic, jade white, uh, bamboo support filament, white, uh, bamboo PLA basic orange, and bamboo PACF, so not carbon fiber nylon. They're all quarter kilogram spools. I think they're just sample spools for this. Um, I'm assuming this is the front of the printer. So let's get this bag off of it. Is the bag open up? I, not there we go. Okay. So I think the AMS is in the printer already. So Bamboo Lab, X1 Combo. So I do get a manual. It looks like these are just printed sheets. Again, the hardware is finalized, but the software and the manual are not. Tell everyone about the PO Box. Oh yeah, I'll remember to say it at the beginning of the stream now. Uh, I have a PO Box. If you wish to send me anything through the PO Box, because people have been asking for that, um, just type exclamation mark PO Box in chat and the address will come up. Be aware, it's a local P.O. box at the post office, so you cannot send me anything through a courier service like FedEx, UPS, anything like that. Okay. Let's open up the manual. So, um, first off, initial impressions. Um, it looks 
pretty solid. Luckily, I don't think there's no shipping damage or anything. It's packaged pretty well. Um, it's got the, uh, the, like the, the rigid foam to hold it in place. Um, we are going to have to do some setup to it though. Um, as you can see, the screen isn't mounted. So let's see here. So it's got an air filter. We got that. Okay. Here we go. AMS unlock. Okay. So it looks like it's designed to ship with the AMS in it. So, uh, remove screws as pitcher. Okay. So I got to take the top off. Oh, we got some tape here. There's little four pieces of tape to hold it on. looks like. Okay. And then this comes off and this is tempered glass. This is tempered glass and it's tinted. So that's nice. This over here. It's gonna get covered in fingerprints no matter what I do. Um, there is rigid foam holding everything in position here. Okay. Got a box here. Okay, the tool head is enclosed. So the AMS is obviously, the AMS is in the printer. We gotta get that out. So let's see here, open the front door. So the glass is really nice. I could see it being a fingerprint magnet. So uh, keep a bottle, keep a microfiber cloth nearby. You may want it. Okay, so let's see here, open that up. Okay, so the door has, like, um, it's not spring-loaded, but you can feel there's, like, ooh, it's magnetic. So the door is magnetic. Got a nice little handle here. And there's, like, some stiffness to it. So that means, like, if it's not perfectly level, it'll probably stay, it'll stay where you, it's not going to slowly close on you. Okay. So remove the screws. So let's see if the box has something that I can remove the screws with. Again, production hardware, software, and packaging may not be finalized. So let's see, what's in the, the goodie bin? What do we got in the goodie bin? Oh, oh, this is my... What do we got in here? Do we have an Allen key? Uh, we got that. Another Allen key. Okay, that comes out. We got some screws, got some tools, and that. Okay. So we got the power plug. Gonna need that. Uh, glue stick and a spool holder. Now, if I'm not mistaken, um, the bed surface. Okay, we got an extra hot end. I'll, I'll touch on that later. Um, it doesn't, it uses removable flex plates, I believe, um, but they are not PEI, and that has to do with the LiDAR, apparently. Um, with the laser, it doesn't work, I don't know, they don't ship with a PEI plate, they got a different material, um, for now, at least. I don't know if that will change in the future. Um, got some connectors here, probably for the AMS. And then I think this is our screen. Yeah, this is our screen. Okay. So we'll we'll see. And then this is the hot end. So once we get it set up, I'll, I'll take a look at the hot end because I think this is a spare one. Yeah, the Allen keys were just kind of floating there. So I got to take two screws out, and then I can pull the AMS out. It looks like. Yeah, remove screws as pictured. Take the AMS from the top. Okay, so I've got one screw. So, by the way, today, we are not doing the AMS today. Um, today's stream, I have to end around 4.30 today. 
um, a little bit earlier than normal. The little guy has his preschool graduation. He's getting big. He starts school in September. But um, because of that, I got to check out a little bit early. So I'll be out at 4.30 today. So we're just going to look at the printer today. And then Friday, we're going to play around with the AMS. So... Okay, so that's the AMS. Um, it's not super heavy. Put this on the ground for now. Just gonna make some room. Okay, so we got the AMS out. Okay, remove the four screws from the bottom of the chamber. So I gotta flip it on its back, it looks like. Um, is there anything on this side? No, so I'm gonna flip it on this side. We'll take a look underneath. Ooh. I'm gonna take a look in there. Does this come out? No, nope, that's, okay, so that is, okay, I see. Flip it on its back here. Okay, so there's four screws that I need to remove and they are Oh, they got little stickers um, showing you where they are. So one, two, three, four. So this base here is injection molded. And you can see the lead screws. So for the Z, um, it's all belted together. It's not an independent Z system. Um, so it doesn't have like tri-gantry leveling or try bed leveling or whatever um but from everyone i've spoken to about this machine and i have tried to avoid uh getting like biased at, or whatever for this uh machine so i've tried to watch avoid watching reviews but i have spoken to a few people about it um and i guess the z is pretty tanky as is like it, it ain't going anywhere so i'm assuming this is for the little plastic piece that was holding the ams Actually, it's getting a little warm. One second here. There we go. Okay. So we got the AMS uh, bottom support plate. Again, this is just for shipping, so. Okay. So we'll flip it up now. So I'm not gonna put the AMS on it yet um, because we're gonna do that Friday. So Friday stream, we'll play with the AMS. And there is a tensioner under there. So there is a tensioner. So AMS assembly, we're gonna skip that for now because we're not playing with the AMS. Okay, so the screen. Remove the protective film from the flat flex cable. Be careful, it's a flex cable. If you damage it, you're kind of SOL. Plug it in like so. Oh, it's got little instructions on the back of it on how to hook it up. That's cool. Okay, so it just clicks in and then this just kind of snaps on. Okay. Uh, spool holder. So there is a spool holder on the back. Um, so if you don't have the AMS, I guess you just use a regular spool holder. Um, I will say this spool holder is kind of small. 
Um, so if you plan on running some of the, the big chungus spools that some companies use, uh, you might not be in luck. You might have to use a separate spool mount or let's be honest, somebody will have a design that you can print pretty quick. Is there one Z driver? Yes, the Z is one motor. Um, it's belted together. They're all linked together. It's one belt drives it all. So it's one motor drives all the Z. So there's three Z lead screws, but they're all belted together. So I know some people will be like, oh, you can't do the tri bed level or tri bed leveling setup. However, um, as long as it holds its tram and doesn't like come out of square, it's not really a big issue. Um, it's a commercial machine. I, I kind of understand that. So where does this screw in? Um, remove the screw pitcher. Oh, okay. So if you're using the spool holder, you got to take a screw out of the back here. And actually, we'll do that after. Because we, I do want to open up the hood on this. I do want to take a look under the hood. But we'll see what we got first. So this is the spool holder. It's a pretty, it's your, it's your, you know, generic spool holder number 47 design. There's no rollers or anything, but I don't think that's an issue. Uh, oh, the bots are here. Everyone say hi to the bots. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, how does this work? Yeah, that's for the AMS system. So, I'm assuming if you want to feed filament in directly, you got to unhook this. Okay. Remove the three screws to unlock the hot bed. Okay. So right now the bed is locked down, so let's move this over. Okay. So we got some more gubbins in here. Oh, this is silica. So it has some silica in it, it looks like, to uh, help with shipping. Okay, some extra flex plates. I'll get to those later. And more screws. One there. And it makes sense that they would have this all locked down for shipping. Um, you don't want anything getting loose flying around or whatever. get to. It's not quite. You gotta come at it on an angle. And I, I know I'm kind of uh, not really keeping up with chat right now. Once we get this kind of set up, We'll, uh, I'll try and pop back in the chat. So the Z is on rods. Um, there's no, it looks like there's no, uh, rails in this machine. It's all on rods. Which honestly is kind of okay. <laughs> um, 
Remove the screws, connect the printer to power, follow the instructions. Okay, so we're powering it on. Um, it doesn't say anything about this. I'm assuming we could take this off. So that looks like that's your extruder uh, release, I guess. Um, oh. Okay, um, so that just comes off with a magnet. So there's four magnets that hold your front cover on. Um, yeah, you can see the extruder in there. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Well, there's ease of maintenance for you. They just held on with magnets. That's nice. Okay. Warning. Okay, so this is something, um, I don't know if it was mentioned on others, but uh, users must use a glue stick to apply adhesive before your first print. Otherwise, the print may adhere too strongly to the fresh build plate and could cause damage to the plate when disassembling the model. So the flex plate, um, it's a, it is a flex plate and there's two sides to it. There's one side here um, that is for PA, so nylon, TPU, and polycarbonate, okay? There's another side here. This is meant for PLA, PETG, and ABS. And it comes with sheets. So I don't know what the exact material is, but it has to do with the LiDAR. And these, I think, are a consumable. Now, I don't know how long these last. I don't know what the exact material is. Honestly, I can't tell if what that is. Like, I don't know what the material is. Um, but I've been advised to put something on it. We're going to use a little secret sauce that I have. Um, give that a try. But that is that. So, and there is some indexing points at the back here uh, to make sure you got it in the same spot when you put it down. So, so yeah. So it's a, well, the, the flex plate is not a consumable. The sticker on the PLA, PETG, and ABS side is. The other side, I don't think you need to replace it. It doesn't say anything about it. I don't know. I gotta, let me open this up. Let me take a look here. Yeah, it only gives you replacements for the PLA. So I think the other side is, is last longer. Um, Steve has a point. All print surfaces are consumable. Eventually you will wear out even a PI sheet. Um, it's just a matter of how long. Okay, it says to plug it in, so we're gonna plug it in now. Oh, uh, there's more. Foam, come on. Piece of foam, so this kind of just flops around, it looks like. So the interior of this machine, um, let me go mobile. Okay, so let's see, so if you look, uh, there's your one motor. Here's your other motor. Uh, we got a drag chain here with one wire. Um, as I was saying, this just pops off with magnets. There is one wire connecting a fan and some other stuff. There's your hot end um, with your extruder. And it's got a little breakout board. Um, the housing for the motors and actually pretty much all the parts are, they look like Judging from what I know in the trade, some sort of either glass-filled nylon or glass-filled polycarbonate. Um, you can see like it's got kind of a, 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 a look to it. You can tell it's glass-filled. Um, either glass-filled nylon or glass-filled polycarbonate. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the belts, tension. If you're wondering how tension the belts are, it's that. Um, moving it around feels like moving around like um, any other Core XY tool head. Um, yeah, um, they look to be the 48, so they're not the big chonky boy NEMA 17s, uh, but they are NEMA 17s, 2 GT belt. I don't know if there's any sort of tensioning system in the belts. I don't know. I'm not going to go too far into, uh, taking apart the gantry, but we will take a look at the back at some point. Okay. So it says I got to plug it in now. Let me grab a power cable. Um... Uh, is, yeah, there's foam under the bed. It says right here, remove the three screws that hold the hot bed down. 
Connect the power to print or follow the instructions on the screen to complete initial calibration. Remove the protective foam underneath the hotbed when calibration is complete. So, plug it in. It's, oh, um, actually, one second. Before I plug it in, I don't see anywhere. For voltage. Okay, so I don't see anything anywhere for voltage. Um, if you're curious, um, the bottom casting, the bottom plate here, was injection molded uh, in April of 2022. So if you're wondering how new this is, the bottom plate here, the injection molded bottom piece, has a uh, the date wheel has April of 2022 of when this was manufactured, if you're curious. So for those wondering at home, it could be automatic. If it is, it is. I live in 110ville, so if it's if it's accidentally set to 220, nothing happens. It's the other way around. That's when you have a bad day. Let's plug it in. Powered on. We got some lights. Okay. Uh, nope, that ain't gonna work. Okay. So select language. English. Oh, next. Okay. Uh, connect to a network. Okay, let me... You guys don't need to see my home network. So, at this time... It only works through the internet, okay? You need internet access for this machine to work right now. Um, so you will be able to use it with like SD cards and whatnot, but for the initial setup, you need their app, you need to connect it to the internet, it needs software updates. That's how you update the firmware on this. You have to basically it does need to be networked. It needs to connect to the internet for it to work. So. What is the secret sauce? Uh, somebody gave me some stuff to try and I've been using it for uh, bed adhesion. Okay, so we're connected to my home network. Now I need, the first thing it does after you connect to the network, it asks for a QR code or it shows you a QR code because you have to use their app, scan the QR code. Okay, device login, login device. And it basically syncs, it registers the printer to your account. Um, at this time, I have no idea if it's like, a, I don't think it's a permanent thing. It's just it now, you, with your account, you can access this printer. Okay, so it's logged in, Nero 3 dp that's me. LDO Motors, Jason, 20, cheers, happy Tuesday, guys. Bamboo party, it's a bamboo party. Okay, login successful, next. Thanks for purchasing a Bamboo Lab device. Terms of service, I'm not gonna read them. I'm just gonna hit agree, because let's be honest, nobody reads them. Okay, uh, help improve the printer. So it asks you if you wanna join like a, um, allows you to, we are training this one to be smarter by feeling. Okay, so if you want them to collect how the machine runs, some printer information, you can, you know, I'll hit join because I'm testing it. Okay, the printer needs to calibrate for the current environment. Please unlock the hotbed before calibration. That's nice. It tells you, you know, the manual says unlock it. It actually tells you here as well, make sure it's unlocked um, before you go to the next step. So let's open the door here. And by the way, this is as far as the door opens. It doesn't open 180. So next. Calibrate may take several minutes. Calibrate. It's a homing tool head. Um, I believe it's sensorless. I don't see any end stops. Yeah, it's sensorless homing. Okay, let's get you out of here before we forget. So it looks like it's sensorless. So what happens in two years time? Um, so Christian, they have said this. For those, go on the Bamboo site. Let me let me pull it up here. Um, 
because this was something a lot of people had questions about, okay? So if you go on the Bamboo site, you go to their blog, um, right here. So they have a whole bunch of, they answer basically a lot of the common questions people have been having about like the machine and whatnot in terms of like the, the company and all that. And one of their things is, um, yes, the, the firmware, oh, why do we got the dancing baby? We're not doing the draw right now. Uh, firmware is closed source and so is the controller. Oh, ooh. It's doing, oh, by the way, which, if you're wondering what it's doing right now, it's doing um, input shaper. It's, they don't call it input shaper. They call it resonance, uh, resonance compensation. Um, but that's what it's doing right now, by the way, if you're wondering. So I'm gonna have to run it again when I put it on the thing. So by the way, um, it says somewhere in here, I can't remember where. Ooh. That's an input shaper. Um, it says somewhere in there, basically, if the company goes under, they're just gonna release everything. So, yeah, it's, it's running resonance compensation. If you've, if you've run Input Shaper before, you know what it's doing right now. But it has that built in, and it's their own firmware. Um, they developed it their own. So, closed source. If it's closed source, it's closed source. So you can't force, like, don't get me wrong. I like open source. I mean, I'm, I'm on the Voron team. We release everything. So, yes, I enjoy open source. However, that doesn't mean you can force every company to be open source. If a company wants to keep their stuff to themselves, it's their right to do it, okay? Now, if you don't agree with that, don't buy the printer. Simple as that. Um, this machine is not aimed for those that tinker. This machine is not aimed at those who like modding their printer. This machine is aimed at people who just want make plastic boat. They don't care about open source because outside of like the Twitter and most of the 3D sphere, most people, let's be honest, don't really care if it's an open source printer or not. They care how well it prints and how much it costs and what it can do. So, you know, it'd be nice if their firmware was open source. There might be some information we can get out of like the LiDAR stuff, but you don't have the right to demand a company open source their development. It is what it is, unfortunately. So my concern is they build on top of open source. If they do, they have to follow any, um, if they do that, they have to follow any licensing. Okay. So if they, you know, their slicer is based on the whole Slick 3R, Prusa, Slicer, Super Slicer. It's based on that that ecosystem. It's based on that code. And speaking with them, from what I understand, is when they're aiming in Q3, which I think is when this printer actually like will hit people's houses, um, they will release the source code, from my understanding, for their slicer. Uh, well, so the LiDAR, um, I don't know. We've looked at, I'll be honest, we, we looked at LiDAR years ago, like as an idea, and the resolution ain't there. The way they're doing it is kind of a, I don't know if it's true LiDAR, but they are using lasers to measure your first layer. Um, but it's a different way. It, it's just not something I don't think you can do. Like, I don't know what sensor they have in there. I don't know what code they're running. Can it print without a working surface server? You can plug in an SD card and print off an SD card. It isn't LiDAR. Yeah, it's it uses lasers to measure the first layer, but it's not true LiDAR. It's, yeah. Laser triangulation sensor. Calibration complete. Okay. Next. Start to print. Okay. Okay. Um. Is that it? Okay. Filament loading test. Okay, here we go. So I'm not using the AMS unless it wants me to use the AMS, unless I have to, okay? So there's your movement, so you can... Okay, so move it around. Files, um, you got, you know, your things, network, account, general. Okay, format, SD card, video, video, okay. Oh, oh, don't show my home address. There we go, okay. I will say the touchscreen's pretty good. Um, you got a dying noise, this controller. Oops, scan the code, AMS, tool head, micro LiDAR. Oh, it's got like um, like a help menu, it looks like. 
Oh, that's cool. So if you got a problem, you push like this little, it looks like a, um, like the text. Let me see, is it? Yeah, you can't see. Um, and it gives you a QR code that you can scan with your phone and it'll tell you like how to fix certain things. Okay, home. Um, let's load some filming in it. Let's do orange, orange. You guys like orange? I like orange. Let's do the orange. So yeah, so going back to the open source versus open source, if they base anything on open source, they obviously have to follow licensing. Um, I am not a stickler for releasing until the printer is released. I know some people are like, the moment you, you fork it, I think you're supposed to. I am not a lawyer. I don't know all the patent laws in every country in the world. I, I, I don't, okay? But if stuff's in development and not released, I don't know if you have to release it, but they will. Um, so these are their spools. These are heavy duty spools, holy shit. And um, there is, you can see right there, there is a little RFID sticker in it. it it's literally an RFID sticker. So PLA basic tells you how much is left. I don't know if this is calibrated correctly, but we should have 250 grams of their orange. And the spool feels pretty solid, I will say. Scan the QR code. <laughs> Brings you to the super secret website. Okay, so I think I have to. That comes out. I don't know if that comes out. Because the filament goes in there, so. Uh, there should be a reusable spool. It would be nice if it was reusable. Um, that's something I will bring up with them. Because they, the thing is, they, they're using this thing. By the way, this machine is not locked down to filaments, okay? I can grab a spool of, you know, Polymaker, Jesse PLA, Prue Cement, and it'll eat it, okay? They use the RFID just for keeping track of what filaments are being loaded into the machine of their own. So because it all talks to each other, I'm pretty sure the app knows I have this printer now. Um, on my computer. That way you can go, oh, hey, you have these filaments loaded. These are the colors and these are how much is left on the spool because when it registers and when it registers it as a full spool. So it keeps track of that. It would be nice if they sold spools with this machine or at least the RFID so that you could tag your own filament and be like, hey, this is now my cruciment spool. And I load, you know, or if you, for those that use master spools, you can use master spools. So that way it keeps track of how much filament you have on the spool. It, it, they use it as a, um, to make things easier and simpler. They don't use it for like DRM. So you can use any filament on this machine. Like I'm pretty sure back here, I don't have an RFID reader. I'm just loading it on the spool in the back. Um, you can twist it in the sides come apart. What, really? Oh! Okay, the spool is, you can use the spool as a master spool. You, you twist it and it comes apart. I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't want the filament to go everywhere. Inventory and profile management, yep. You said any, yep, we already did the update. It, it That was the first thing it did was an update. So let's heat this up to 190, okay. So I've pushed filament to the tool head, okay? It's not past the extruder. I'm, I'm gonna see if it'll feed it. Oh, glue stick. Yeah, I will put some stuff on the bed. You know what, for now, I'll use their glue stick because that's what they say. You know, I have some extra stuff. I won't try that on camera. I'll use what they gave me. Okay, it's locked in position. I can't move that. Okay, so it's already at 190. So extruder load. Oh, okay, that's that. Okay. So let's put this on the bed. Yay, glue stick. It's like it's, you know. I'm coating the whole bed because I, I just am. Put down some more. I will say the Z is very quiet. 
The Z is very quiet. Okay, good enough. Okay, so filament extruder load. Okay, it's pulling filament in. There's no like auto load. You got, oh, there we go. Okay, so it's got filament in it now. Okay. So, um, okay. Oh, hey, it has a room temperature. It's 24 degrees in here right now. So, speed benchy? Speed benchy. Let's do the 17 minute speed benchy. So, AMS. AMS has not detected. The model will be printed with the current filament. Okay. So, it knows if it has the AMS on it or not. Um, so the LiDAR will come in play. You'll see in a minute here when the LiDAR comes into play. What it does, you can see here, when you select it. So you can use any slicer with this machine as far as I understand. If you feed this normal G-code, it eats it like normal G-code. But there's other features that this machine has, such as the LiDAR, that you need to use their slicer to use, okay? So mobile. So you look here, this is the, the Benchy. This is part of their code. It's got like a picture of it. You can actually like, let's see here, go back. So yeah, I guess you can like actually load pictures as part of slicing, I guess, I don't know. So these are built-in models. So you can see it does bed leveling, flow calibration, vibration calibration, and first layer inspection. So that's what this print will do, it tells you. So I guess, if you like feed it normal G-code, it won't do like first layer calibration or something like that. Um, so print now. Okay. Nozzle is too low. Please check to see if nozzle is. I mean nozzle is too low. Oh, I got a glob on it. Heat bed preheating. Okay. So I'm gonna have to find something to put this on. I'm gonna leave the uh, the top glass off for now. So it's, it's doing a nozzle tip cleaning, I guess, which it did not. So the bed is only 35C, it prints PLA at 35 it looks like. Nozzle tip cleaning, okay. What is going on here? Uh, the temperature is dropping. Okay, it's doing input shaper. <laughs> that a Revo clone? No, they have their own tool head. I'm, I'm, I got it right here. Whoa. Okay, so it looks like it does input shaper pretty much before every print or residence compensation, whatever they call it. But they use their own uh, proprietary tool head and it it's not a Revo. <laughs> it is not a Revo. Can it detect? It's not saying anything about the door. I don't know if it can. If you're looking at it from the top, I don't see any sensors. So. Wow, 
Auto Ben Leveling. Mm, so there's that offset. So I'm thinking that extra, because right now it's holding the, the nozzle at like 140. Okay, so it's doing a bed mesh right now. I don't know what it's doing with this. Oh, this is the LiDAR. When it's doing the da 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 that's the LiDAR doing its thing, apparently. Or the laser. Yeah, the nozzles are proprietary. They, the nozzles are proprietary, and from the looks of things, they are single unit. So, if you watched Mod, ModSpot video, I have a production what it looks like, because his were not tinted. But this is your hot end, okay? So the nozzle and the heat brake and the, and the heat sink are all one unit. And these are the hardened ones. So these are all one unit, it looks like. And the heater is probably part of that assembly. I will say this does not look like it'll be a fat process to get your print started. So it's a 17 minute benchy, but it looks like it takes a minute to get going. So how many people? Oh God, we have 800 people here. Hello everyone. <laughs> this is the first time I've looked at how many people we have. How's everyone doing today? Hope you're all having good. Y'all having good? If you want to win some filament, there's a link in the description. Go fill that out. I'm going to give a spool to somebody worldwide from Polymaker. $35 for the hot end? That's not horrible. Especially if it's an all metal, like it's if it's a hardened one, you're not going to be going through them. I've got some thermal grease here. What else do I got? Why is it hitting the bed? Um, that's that's how it does its Z offset. There is no Z switch. It uses the nozzle itself for Z zero for homing the Z. Um, well, it actually it heats the nozzle up to 140. So if you do have a blob on the nozzle, it'll probably just squish it out of the way. So that's basically what I do on my Voron with the um, my Z offset. Okay. So what it's doing now is it's printing a calibration. It does this, I guess, every print. So this machine is very smart, but it has to do a process before every print. So it's not heat up and go. It's heat up, calibrate, then go. And since it looks like it does this on every print, um, it may take a while. Okay, so there's the LiDAR going. So it's, it's scanning the print to check extrusion rate. <laughs> I don't know if you could see that. And now it's printing lines and it's going to check the extruder calibration. If you look at it, it's, it's basically doing pressure advance on the go and it's auto calibrating it. Think you could turn it off? Um, if it saves the value, that might not, that might be a good idea. However, if you're somebody like me who uses a lot of different brands of filament, this actually would be nice to leave on all the time. Cause let's be honest, when you're doing a 20 minute print, saving 10 minutes at the beginning doesn't mean anything. Okay. So I would recommend, you know, if you're like me and you switch lots of different brands of filament and you print different kinds of filament. Having it do a full calibration every print that had eh, 10 minutes would to do, but then you'll never have issues. It just, it just works. Right. So I don't know if it does this every print. What's it doing? Okay. It's, Okay, it's priming. Okay, there goes the speed benchy. Oh, 
Oh, jeez, you can hear the... <laughs> so if you're wondering um, how the cooling is on this machine, you got, I think it's a 50-15 in the tool head, um, but you also got this big chonky boy down here um, that's just blasting air up through the side there. So um, you can choose what calibration it does in the slicer. Okay. If it does a frequency calibration every print, ah, not really. Well, Nevermore wasn't the first one to do that. There, there, there have been people putting blowers on the side to blow like curtain air across a print has been kind of a thing for a little bit now. As fast as Jerome Powell. Oh, <laughs> I understood that reference. Uh, the problem is with the door, I can't really... Uh, there we go. Okay, um, noise level. Let me take my noise canceling out. It's loud. This machine is loud. Um, the fans are loud. Um, and it's a fast Core XY, which anyone who, who's built a Voron or a, um, a Rat Rig V Core, any other fast Core XY machine, uh, a VZ bot, you know the printers aren't quiet when you're when you're cranking these speeds. You know that. Um, what Excel? I think this is the 20K XL. It doesn't say. It just all I know is 3D Benchy V9 PLA 17 minute. That's what this G code is. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let me close it up here. So this is acrylic. Oh, it's still loud, but the fans aren't as loud. The fans are probably the loudest thing on this for the continual drone. It's the fans. And the Again, these are tinted, so these are nice looking. And they are, um, so again, it's the X1 carbon. Um, on the X1, the base bottle, these are polycarbonate. The door and the top is polycarbonate and the side panels are plastic. On this one, it's aluminum and um, tempered glass. Every, oh yeah, yeah, this is definitely optimized G-code. Like it looks pretty solid. There's like an internal like structure of the printer, um, like an external frame skeleton that is steel. And then you got everything's kind of bolted to that. The motor mounts are either glass filled nylon or I think they're glass filled nylon. Um, it's kind of hard to say. Motors are slightly warm. Uh, it's 2GT belt. I don't know what brand. Doesn't say, it just says 2GT on the belt. Uh, your X rods are carbon fiber. Um, uh, it's a wobbly. It's moving fast. This desk isn't bolted to the wall. Uh, what I'm going to do is after um, this is going to sit on a bench that is bolted to the wall. So. Oh, we're gonna print some CF with it. I, I've got I've got all kinds of stuff we're gonna print with this. Cause I know a lot of the videos people have been printing PLA. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this to work. So yeah, it includes uh, CF nylon. So I'm assuming it breeds CF nylon fine. Uh, is it exposed? Hello, 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 hello. I'm gonna wave my hands. Are we back? Are we back? 
Are we back? We're back? We're back? Yeah, I missed you guys! I missed you! That was OBS or something. It said I had a drop in communication. I don't know how long I was out for. Um, yes, the desk is wobbly. It's not bolted down. I will be putting it on a bench that is bolted down. And the bots are back! Heck yeah! Oh, already gone. Steve is smashing the bots today. Please show the hot end. I'm gonna try. I haven't done it yet. I haven't done it yet. I don't know how it is, and there's nothing covered in here on how to do it, so we gotta figure that out. But um, if you're curious, this is the hot end in the nozzle. It's a one unit assembly. So we'll take a look at that after. After this boat is done, we're going to take the back panel off to take a look at the electronics. Can I get to 1K? If we get... I, I don't know what my record is. I think during the... I don't know if we've ever hit a thousand views on this channel. So... It's a noisy machine. Any printer pushing these speeds with NEMA 17s and belts will sound like this. It's also loud because it also has a massive blower fan blasting it for part cooling. This is a this machine is not meant to be quiet. Like compared to, you know, a Prusa Mark III, this, this machine is not meant to be a quiet machine. This is meant to be a fast machine. It does have a silent mode though. It also has a ludicrous speed mode. Um, only X is carbon fiber. Yeah, only the X is carbon fiber. It makes no sense to have the other things carbon fiber. The X is the only, uh, rods that are moving. Oh, you can turn the light off and on. Cool. Fast or quiet, pick one. Pretty much. What do you think of the CF rods? Um, they're fine, I guess. I, To be honest, I've never built a printer or used a printer with carbon fiber rods before, so... Um... Yeah, they will... I, th I think the machine right now, somebody's asking about nozzles. I think it only comes with 0.4. However, they will offer different size nozzles in the future. So right now it's only 0.4. How does the built-in webcam work? I don't know. Let's... Uh... And I believe this is through the internet, so you can watch this anywhere. Like, you, you can watch this anywhere. So. Yeah, the camera is... Where is the camera at? Um, where is the camera at? Oh, it's like down here. Um... You can kind of see it. The camera's like right there. Uh, any way to stream it? I don't know. Because you, you, on their slicer, like their, their Bamboo Lab slicer, or their control firmware, you could see it there. Um... But I can't really see... You would have to get the IP address of it, and I don't know if it streams over the IP. But it's streaming to the app. I don't think you can pull it to stream it. I don't know. Is that a light on the side? That's a light. I could turn it off and on. Um...
right click the video you can't it's an app you can't it's not it's not in an um a ui or it's not in a, a browser it's it's in the app so uh apparent i don't know if it does spaghetti i think that's coming as i said the firmware is not finalized yet um, it says 256. It, it apparently has a 256 build volume. Um, if you're curious... Uh, front to back of the flex plate is 256. Does it come with a filter? Um, it does have a... I think it's an activated uh, charcoal filter. The X1 Carbon does. The X1 does not. It's optional. Uh, did Poly I do have some Polymaker PACF, and I will be printing it on this machine. Some bulging. Well, it's a 17-minute bench, but we'll, we'll wait till it's done. Are you talking about right here at the front? I think that's just light. Like, are you talking about right there? I think that's just light. When it's done, we'll take it out. We'll take a look. Well, this, this calibration stuff's all optional. No, you're not tied to their in-house filament. I don't know why people think that. A lot of people have said that. Like, I've, I've been kind of keeping an eye on, like, the different discords and, like, community groups of what people have been saying. And the amount of, like, completely incorrect stuff people are saying about this machine is ridiculous. Like, no, you can use any filament. Like, right now, I'm literally just feeding a spool from the back. It's one of their spools, but there's no RFID reader back here. Like... It literally just sucks in filament. <laughs> so, no, you're not tied to any specific filament with this machine. You you can use RFID. It has the option, same way the Ultimaker does. You can use their stuff for auto calibration and whatnot, or you can just YOLO it. Uh, what kind of bearing or bushing does... I, I don't know. I can't see. It's all internal. Um, I would have to take apart the tool head, and I don't want to go that far. Yeah, it's not Stratasys. <laughs> Uh, is it kind of cheating? Well, yeah, but it is what it is. The, uh, yeah, RFID is only for the AMS, which, again, I have the AMS right here. The AMS is right here, um, but we're not going to play with it today. We're going to play with it on Friday. So Friday will be AMS playing around. So. Because today I can only stream till 4.30. So, if you haven't yet... Um, link in the description. If you want to win some Polymaker filament, there's a link in the description. Go fill that out. Well, somebody's going to win a spool of Polymaker filament. We do that every stream. We give away a spool of filament. So if you're new to the channel, hey, consider subscribing so you don't miss out because, you know, I do videos and stuff too. But hey, I also stream and you can win some filament every time I stream. Thirteen more likes. Oh, come on, guys. We're almost at the funny number for likes. If everyone in this chat goes and likes the smash button right now, we might hit that funny number. And then the bot show up again. What filament draw? When? Uh, I do the draws at the end of stream. You do not have to be present to win, but you can only uh, enter during the draw itself, or during the stream itself. Streaming for 60 minutes. Nice. 69 minutes. Nice. Ah, oh, dang it. Too many people liked it. Oh, well. It is what it is. <laughs> also, if you want to help support the channel, the content I create, things I do, consider becoming a member of the channel. We do a monthly members-only live stream. Um, second last week of the month, usually. Just kind of hang out, chat, and chill. Um, there's a currently a members-only Discord. It will be public soon, but right now it's members only while we get it set up. Um, yeah. I don't know. I know I'm supposed to do the self-shilling stuff every now and then, but I hate doing it. Look at the printer print. How's it bridging? It's bridging pretty good. 420 dislikes now. Uh, no. <laughs> um... Well, I've seen this print a bunch of times. Like, I've seen this print done by multiple people many times, so... Thoughts on the noise level? It's loud. But... 
what machine pushing these speeds isn't? Other than like the Pantheon. But that thing's eight grand and has ball screws and servos. So it's an enclosed printer with NEMA 17s pushing 20k XLs. It is going to be loud. This is not a quiet machine. Um, I don't have an SD card. There is an SD card slot, but I don't have one in. Yeah, the 999 version is the X1. This is the X1 Carbon, so it has a few upgrades to it. Tomorrow's Fruit Day? No, Fruit is weekend. What bearings are on the X-axis? I don't know. The whole tool head is completely enveloped. I can't see into there to see uh, what it is. On the Y-axis, they just look like... It, honestly, they're probably LMUs. LMU 88s or... Yeah, they're LMU bearing style. Colin! Gifted five community memberships. Cheers! Thank you, Colin. Well, everything election... I wouldn't argue that way. Like... The price is killing it. Like, you don't... You build a Voron because you like building printers. Like, you, you do know Vorons were never built to be speed demons. Some people who do speedboats think they are, but they're designed to be like Ultimaker competitors, and Ultimaker isn't a speed demon. Plus, it's fun to build your own printer. Not everyone likes, you know, just having a commercial machine. Some people like open source stuff. Plus, you know, we don't have like a several dozen person team with multi million dollar backing. <laughs> There's just a bunch of people in their basement having fun. There's a difference. Ooh. That is loud when it does that. So it does like a little nozzle wipe at the end there. He's done. Okay, so... He's benchy. Uh, where is my spatula? So those are going to be fun to get rid of. Okay. Benchy. Benchy, benchy, benchy. So there is the 17 minute benchy. So that, um, that ain't bad for 17. You got a little deformation on the bow here. You could tell like the color sheen changes because of the speed change. But for 17 minutes, I, I will say, you know, this is loads better than like the hour and a half Benji I see off of some of the commercial machines I've, I've tested. So. Der Backstein Backer. Der, der Beck Mr. German Man, thank you for becoming a member. First layer? Yeah, first layer. Do focus. There's the first layer. And again. As you saw, we did nothing. We took it out of the box and we hit print. The letters on the back. Um, they are a little... You know. I, I can read 3D Benchy. Eh, a little bit of ghosting on it, but that's a hard detail to get really good. Are you going to lube it? Nope. How is it versus Prusa Benchy? Um, I might have one. Okay, I do, I do, I do. Okay, so the one on the right is a Prusa Benchy, the stock Prusa Benchy that's like with the G code that ships with the Prusa. Okay, this one right here is a Prusa Benchy. This is the one off of this. Okay, I don't know what time the stock Prusa Benchy time is, but it ain't 17 minutes. And the machine as is right here is only a hundred dollars more. So, 
I think the Prusa Bench is, uh, is like a 0.16 layer height. I think this is 0.25. So the layer height is different, but still. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Okay. So, um, I've got two buttons here. Thomas, gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Is it better than a Voron? Depends on how you slice it. I'm sure, you know, I don't, here's the thing. This thing has a blower that does curtain air cooling. So you're going to get better cooling on this machine than a Voron, but a Voron's not designed for that speed. Oh, David's here. Everyone say hi, David. Okay, so I have two buttons here. I don't know what they do. I have one that has like a, uh, well, we gotta wait for all these memberships to go away. Charlie Keen became a member. Go away, overlay. Ah, dang it, okay, well, move the camera. I've got two buttons here. I got a power button and I got this button. I don't know what this button does. I'm gonna push it. I don't know what this does. Oh, I think it restarts the machine. Okay. That restarts the machine. <laughs> and that turns off the machine. Okay. So we know what those buttons do. Or, oh, you know what? I think that's the e-stop. I think that's the e-stop. Yeah, I think that's the e-stop. So pretty sure that's an e-stop and that's the power which actually puts it into like a standby mode. Okay, so speaking of power, you wanna open it up? Let me unload the film in here. Load. Oh, it brings it up here. Okay, so it's heating up. We're going to do an unload and then we're going to power off the printer, spin it around. And then we're going to um, take the back panel off. See the electronics. Does it have a long tail? Uh, we'll check the filament when it pulls it out. Because I don't know if this unload cycle that it's doing now would be the same unload cycle it does when it does a, um, a filament swap. Okay. Um, if you're wondering what the tip looks like, it's flat, like broke off. <laughs> okay. Max Kung, $2, cheers. Hi, David. Okay, so we got the filament unloaded. Let's turn you off. Turn you off. The sex bots have returned. Let me kind of. I don't know how to take this off. That's the AMS. There's got to be a way to take this off. Well, let's see if we can get this back panel off. Smaller one. Does it cut? I, I don't know. I haven't played with the AMS yet. So that's gonna be there. There's gonna be a lot to taking this back off. There's a lot of screws. Holy shit. I 
Carl Taylor, thanks for becoming a member. Uh, let me just check something here. The filament runout sensor. Um, I'm not. I don't have the AMS hooked up. Oh, is the filament supposed to load into there? Oh, well. I don't know. I just shove filament in the hole. I thought this is for the AMS. Or something. So I'm just going to take the back panel off. I want to see the electronics on this. I haven't seen one of these opened up yet, so I'm actually kind of curious. I do have some small screw bins, but I'm using them all right now. What the heck? How'd you not charge? Okay, well. There you go. Tap Fox, mute. There we go. Okay. Somehow it uh it didn't charge. <laughs> okay, so. okay, so it looks like there's like a locking tab here. That is for 
the Z switch or what? Or not Z switch, the one. There's like, it, it's, it, the metal goes under here, so this cover plate's gotta be a cover plate, right? The thing is, I don't wanna accidentally take something apart I shouldn't take apart. Okay, no, 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 these are locks. So again, I'm going to preface it, preface this. This machine is not a tinkerer's machine. This is not a machine meant for you to mod it, to tweak it. This is a machine that is, you buy it, you print with it. <laughs> so let's take a look at what we got under the hood. So at the back, you can see you got your belts here. So we've got our belts. Okay, motors are there. Wire, the wire routing's really nice. Um, here is a fan. This is, I think, for your your filter. I don't know how you replace it though. Uh, power goes in here. Okay, and then the controller is over here. So as you can see, the controller's there. Power supply is down here. Um, I don't see any brand on it. Me. Ugh, I know. Let's go. Yeah, I don't see any brand on the power supply. Wait, is this? No. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, it's definitely different. Like, that is their own thing. That is the controller there. Power supply is under here. I, there's like a plastic cover on it. I'm not gonna fiddle with it. Um, it doesn't look that big of a power supply. It is a, it's a Meanwell LRS 124. So it's only a 100 watt power supply, which means the bed is probably mains. Um, it's the only thing I could think of, how you would get 100 watts and still get the bed that hot. So the bed is probably mains voltages. So you're probably, it's only running four Z motors plus the hot end. So 100 watts is fine, 100 watts is fine. Um, and there's probably, the SSR is probably built into, judging by like how big and chunky that heatsink is and the fact we have a uh, an XT30 connector right there, um, the SSR is probably part of the controller board. So yeah, yeah, it's gotta be because it, it comes all the way down to here. So the solid state relay is part of the controller board. Um, there's a little fan on the side there for cooling that heat sink. Um, the thing is, I can't see, I'm, I'm assuming the board is two-sided because I, I can't see any, um, there's like another breakout board here, but this is for the AMS. Yeah. It's actually a nice little package. And as you can see, like you can see into the printer. So it's not like it's fully isolated from the, the, the enclosure, um, but it is separate. So yeah, that's, um, yeah, the bed I think is AC powered. I think the bed is AC powered. Let me see where the wires are for the bed. Okay, so the wires come out the back. So the, these wires right here are for the bed. Oh, these are the bed wires right here. And they go, yeah, they're big chalky boys. So there's your bed wires and they go up and down. So yeah, that is that. Can I see any names on the stepper motors? Um, stepper motor, uh, 
DJ4, 2D22, lot number 42 mil stepper drivers, I think. Stepping motor. There's no, they're not LDOs if you're wondering. It looks clean. Like it, the back of this machine looks pretty dang clean in terms of how it's laid out. Like there's, the wires are managed. There's a little piece of tape kind of holding them flat in a few spots. Um, it, it looks pretty dang pro. Like this actually looks like a pretty, uh, a pretty solid setup, I will say, in terms of how this package is laid out. Four exposed. It looks like there are four exposed pins on the top right. Top right of what? Are you talking about this connector right here? That is for the AMS, if I'm not mistaken. So. Now the power supply is fine. Power supply is fine. People, power supplies and motors and a lot of other things could take much more heat than people think. Um, there's a fan circulating some air back here. You'll be fine. Yeah, this is the poop chute. So if you're curious, this is the poop chute. Okay, um, let's get this plate back on and do another print. So yeah, so I guess on the, uh, I, I think the back plate is the same on all of them, but these side plates here are, these ones are aluminum. On the X1, they're just polycarbonate, I believe. So, let's see here. Yeah, it, honestly, looking at this machine, this does not seem fly-by-night. Like, taking a look at the back there, it doesn't seem like a fly-by-night type of operation. Like, they, they put some thought and effort into this setup. So that makes me feel a little bit better. I tried PC. No, we we just got this machine. Someone or another, my brother in Christ. We've had it unboxed for an hour. <laughs> we've done one benchy. However, I do have a nice spool of uh, PCCF here, so we're gonna feed it that next. Slice some Voron parts. Oh, believe me, that's coming. I'm going to put this machine to use. Believe, believe that. We're going to put some work on this machine. Okay, that's going to be a little bit annoying. So some of these do screw in the plastic, so you need to be careful. And not overdo it. Ah, uh, and the sex bots are back. Yay! How's their slicer? We're gonna play with their slicer right now. I got this really long screw. Oh wait, no, that's one of the bed screws. That's fine. Okay, put my spool holder back on. Yeah. 
backer count is shooting up. Apparently, a lot of people wanted to hear my thoughts on this. Now, here's the thing. My personal view on Kickstarter, do not put any money into Kickstarter that you literally would be fine going outside and burning. Or, you know, if you're going to burn it, you might as well donate to the channel, help content I create, things I do. We can do more things. But either way, Kickstarter is a gamble, okay? If you are personally okay backing something, and if it doesn't come to fruition and just taking that money in it going poof, bye-bye, that's what I view Kickstarter as. It's always a gamble. Now, initial impressions on this machine from what I'm seeing are pretty favorable. At least, you know, looking at this machine, I feel like, hey, this is actually a machine that will deliver, hopefully. However, there's always a chance. There is always a chance. So if you are worried about Kickstarter, you can literally just wait until this machine goes on retail sale and buy it retail. I, yeah, I hire the sex bots to get more engagement. <laughs> okay. So, let's put some PCCF in here. This was sealed pretty well. So um, I'm not too worried and my humidity in this room is 35 Celsius. We might be okay. Oh yeah, let's give the machine some power. On. And I am gonna put the lid on. And then we also gotta flip this around to the PCCF side, right? Yeah. And this time I'm gonna put my little, my helper on. Did I see humidity in Celsius? No. It's 35% humidity. It is currently 40, 24 degrees Celsius in this room. Okay, so we've switched it around. Oh, and by the way, the, for the magnet, the magnet is um, like a one piece magnet, if you're curious. So that's that. What's it look like under? The, okay, the entire bed's there's like a. Uh, for, if you're curious about the bed, it's a metal carriage, Y carriage, and then the rest of it's plastic. So. So the slicer. Oh, first I got to load the filament. Um. How hot do you print PC at? I don't know. Two forty. Two forty would be enough. Uh, Felix5, do you have any concern regarding the longevity of carbon fiber rods? Um, why are you doing a calibration? I guess you want to. Okay. Uh, it's part of the secret sauce I'm testing. Are you done? Okay, so let's actually, let me pull off there. Here's the thing, I'm downloading something I know is outdated. Matt Shammy, 20, cheers. Hello, DFH crew. Sorry for being late to the show. Good work. Cheers. Welcome. Okay, so we got extrude.
Okay, now it's catching. There we go. Okay. Zero. Enter. So we've extruded our filament. I don't know where my tweezers went. I've got like 20 pairs of tweezers and I can never find them. So, it's got a hardened nozzle. Okay, you've got some uh, PACF loaded. New project. So we got the Bamboo Lab PACF. So obviously you can put like generic. So it's got presets for a bunch of stuff, but we're gonna do PACF, bed type. Um, what do we got? We got the engineering plate, bamboo engineering plate. Okay. Um, our profile is 0.2, um, layer height 0.2, first layer, adaptive layer height, no. Strength. Okay, walls, because it's a Voron part, we're going to do four walls. Top bottoms are five. Bottom layer five. Forty percent. Uh, let's do guy right, because why not? Um, so there is advanced settings. So there's that. Now, this slicer doesn't have like all, there's the speeds and feeds. you change the temperatures? Is there a way to change the temperatures? Am I not seeing temperatures? Um, support. I got no support. Other. Let's load up the file. Downloads. Still put a beta part. Okay. So where is the temperatures? Under filament, oh, the under filament. Click to edit preset. Oh, okay, there you go. So you have presets. Okay, so first layer there, bed. Okay, there it is. So under, so you can have presets for different filaments. That's nice, that's nice. Cooling, uh, no cooling for three layers. So it is going to run some park cooling. Oh, fan speed zero. Okay, actually. Okay, so there's the auxiliary fan speed. So none of that. Okay. So PA, it is what it is. Um, slice. It's pronounced gyroid. Is it gyroid? Gyroid? Groid? Garioid? Oh, wait. I don't want no brim. No brim. No brim, skirt loop type. Okay, and I think also you can change. Um, slice. There we go. Check the top layer. I think you changed it. Did I? What do you mean change top layer? Slayer height. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, print. So it's a two hour print. Unfortunately, I won't be able to finish it because um, I can only stream for another 45 minutes. Okay, so there you go. So bed leveling, flow calibration, we want to turn on vibration calibration. And we're going to send it to that printer. Send. What mode is it? It's uh, the default mode. So it's a two hour print.
I didn't see mode. Where is mode at? Where is mode at? Uh, for bed adhesion? Uh, some stuff I'm trying. Printer. That is preheating. Okay. Keep saying the nozzle height is too low. Well, I started up, but mode is on the touch screen only. Oh, okay. Well, it's printing in the normal mode. I did flip it to the engineering side. Can you end uh, mode in the slicer? I don't believe so at this time. It is preheating the bed. So 46, 47. It's going to take a minute to preheat the bed. So while the bed's preheating, um, if you had not had the chance, make sure you enter in the description for the chance to win some filament from uh, Polymaker. We're giving away a spool. Open anywhere in the world. We're doing a single spool draw. Um, while you're in the description, if you want to help support the channel content I create, there's links down there as well. Consider liking the smash button if you have not. Consider becoming subscribed to the channel if you have not. Ring the bell. Do the other YouTube stuff, blah, 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 blah. You know the deal. Um, it's not an actively heated chamber. No. Stop telling people to enter. I want to win. Well, I'm not saying liking the smash button will help your odds, but I'm not saying it won't help your odds. It, it may or may not possibly, potentially, but who knows? I don't know. Computer algorithms. How do they work? Polyterra speed benchy. Um, we can do it again. Well, right now we're trying this stuff, but yeah, I got no problem running it again. Because I ran it with their filament, so I'm going to do another one with a generic filament to see how the difference is. Are we at 900 people? Jeez. Look at all the new faces. Hello, all the new people. Welcome to the show. E3D overhang egg. Yep, I'll do that too. See how the massive fan helps with that. I think this is, I don't know what, the only other stream that could have come close to this. Let me, let me see. Are we, is this the most I've had on a live stream? Um, YouTube studio, content. Uh, let's see let's see here it's either that one or this one so on analytics because the concerning kit one did pretty good nope we, we're doing better there than the concerning kit 922 922 wow um wow and then, yeah, this is actually the most people I've had on a live stream. We didn't hit a thousand. No, the concerning kit live stream, I think we that was the most I've ever had, and that was 800 and something, 868, I believe. Um, I don't think the Prusa one got a thousand either. Any thoughts on building a Jebel E? Maybe. Is it bushing or bearing on the x-axis? The thing is, I don't know. Um, I, I can't really see in there. The problem is, it is... You know what? I want to say bearing or bushing. Yeah, it's a bushing. I think it's a bushing. It's hard to see because the whole thing's enclosed. But if you look at it... You can kind of see the hint of like brass colored around it, a ring around it. You can't really see in there. I'd have to take the tool head apart. We're still waiting on the bed to heat up, by the way, if you're wondering what's going on. I 
Any information about the drivers? Um, the drivers are probably um, TMCs. I, I would assume they're TMCs. Gary, five, cheers. I can see if the dog was out there. The problem is I got all this cardboard in the way. Ugh. Let's see if the dog was out here. Nope. Nope, he's hiding. What's the bed heat up graph look like? Let's find out. It just says the hot bed is heating up. Do I have a graph? I don't think it gives me a graph. Um, so there's that. Yeah, I, I don't think I have it home. Yeah, I don't have a graph. Oh, you wanna say hi, buddy? There we go. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Come to say hi. How's your head doing? Come on. Well, feeling good. You good boy? How you doing? How are you still have all this fur? How do you have all this fur still? Seriously. You are just covered in fur. No, don't. I got fur everywhere. Everything's covered with fur. All the fur. Uh... I don't think you can, uh, I don't know if you can, the thing is there's no USB port. I don't have a USB port. That controller does not have a USB port. You can't use Octoprint with this. Yep, I have the MMU. The, the AMS is now covered in dog fur. But I do have the AMS. I just didn't hook it up. Um, I, the stream today, and it, by the way, the AMS just sits on top of it. Um, for today, unfortunately, I don't have the time, um, because the stream's going to end in a little over half an hour. Um, so we are going to do the AMS and do a multicolor print on Friday. On a scale of one to 10, where do you put this thing? It depends. Okay. So who is this machine for? This machine is for somebody who just wants to print and they don't want to fiddle or mod or tweak. So if you're the type that just wants to buy an Ender 3 and mess around with it and do kind of mods, this isn't for you, okay? If you're like me, who like building Vorons as your primary thing or, or building DIY printers, right? You know, this machine isn't really for you. Ooh. Can't see it because of the reflection, but the bamboo lab part lights up. So this machine is for, hey, do you like 3D modeling and you want to make what you 3D modeled real and you don't like resin? This is a kind of machine for you. Hey, do you want something for a print farm where you don't want a lot of printers, but you want a fast printer that's reliable? Something like this might be for you. This machine is for those that want to print. They don't want to print turf, right? They don't want a project. They just want to print. Uh, is the AMS smarter than the ERC? I haven't played with it yet. Um, it's the same type of setup though, where it extrudes, it, it basically, it's the same type of system as the ERCFA or the Prusa MMU, where it feeds from multiple different spools into one nozzle. Uh, can you control the print bamboo lab from the, um, I don't know. I don't know. I can turn the lamp on and off. That's about it. Lamp off, lamp on. <laughs> light on, light off. Uh, thanks for the clipper guides and linear rail clearing. Cheers. Uh, both are very useful this week. That's good to hear, uh, Lee Smith. And thanks for the five. But yeah, I know a few people that do like modeling and whatnot that like, they, they just want to make the things they design. This machine would be great for that, or, you know, 
I haven't done a review on it. I've only played around with it for an hour, but I'm saying what this machine is aimed at. It's aimed for those types. Um, Coder doesn't seem to care what kind of uh, printers in here. Uh, uh, the AMS, it's, 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 they call it the AMS. I can't remember what AMS stands for. It, it's more like an IRCFA where you, it only does four spools. However, you can have multiple of these connected. Apparently you can daisy chain these. But this machine is not perfect. I have seen some people have had some issues with it. Um, jams um, with the AMS system, apparently. I think Joel had one. So it's it's not perfect. And if you're curious what the inside of the AMS looks like, um, this is it. So you got four different feeds in, a bunch of gear boxes and whatnot. Um, and apparently this does have some sizing issues with some spools don't fit in here. Um, Take a look because like I have you know these big chunky Replitech spools the this ain't gonna fit in here unfortunately um, and I think is it the Jesse filament spools don't work either um, might be the, the cardboard spools yeah the the Jesse spool is a little they got these dividers in here so not all spools will fit in here unfortunately But what you could technically do is just feed them some, somewhere else, like above. Although they do spin. Yeah. So one thing that this does, there's gearing here. It will actually, as it feeds the filament back out, it actually winds the spool back up. So that it, it it's, has its own, it has its own built-in buffer essentially. Yeah, you could daisy chain the AMS up to 16. You don't need a rewinder. It does the rewinding automatically. See you, John. What is the total height? 27 inches. And the total depth, if you have a spool on the back, is about 20 inches. Convert that to metric. They don't have a metric uh, ruler or tape measure. It's doing the pressure advanced tuning or the uh, linear advance or no, not even uh, resonance compensation. Bleh. They say not to, but can you try TPU? If it says not to, I'm not going to do it. Don't put diesel in your in your gas car. It says not to. You should try it, though. I can see it being an issue, though, because it's got to push from here to there and then from there to there. It's TPU in a setup like this is tricky because you got to feed it from up here all the way down through everything to the out. And the AMS makes the input change. Yeah, also having it on a bench that's not bolted to anything does too. <laughs> oh, and we are printing, by the way. Um, so we are, we are doing that little sample print. I don't know if we can get a view in here. This is going to be a problem. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> So the LiDAR is doing the LiDAR thing. You know, it's not really LiDAR, it's lasers. <laughs> yeah, so the AMS, it, it works like the in route. So it has a separate feeder that feeds the filament from the AMS down to the tool head, and then the tool head grabs it. The thing is though, pushing TPU through that whole network, because it's gotta go through here, out, down out through a buffer thing into that and then over there it's just you're pushing wet noodles and it's not recommended most interesting question 2.4 versus x1 do you want a project or do you want a printer if you like the Vor vorons are meant for people who like building printers so if you like building printers 
and tweaking printers and modding printers that if you just want to print and you don't care about the printer itself, you just want something that works this they're aimed at different markets. One's a DIY project. Other one is a turnkey solution. Let me see. What can I do here? Shoot. There we go. You can see my desk crimes. Behold the mess. And the candy. Um, the internal cam, unfortunately, I can't pull the source for it because it's a, uh, it, it, it's in a, it's in a program. I, I don't think I can pull that out. I don't think there's a way for me to actually pull out. Oh, Mr. Jada, thank you for coming, member. Like, let me, uh, let me, let me see. Put a light on the inside. I, I could do that, but it's already nice and heated up. Okay, so let's see. What does it show up in my home network? Uh, doesn't say. <laughs> it's on my home network. I don't know what it's called on my home network though. Yeah, there's no way to pull out the feed, unfortunately, from the camera. Then the IP. I don't know what the IP is. Can I? Settings network. Okay. Yeah, if I if I put the IP into my web browser, nothing comes up. Nothing comes up. I can't unfortunately do anything with it. Does it take an SD or micro SD card? Take some micro SD. No, I, I have its IP. You can push a button here and it'll tell you its IP address. Can I shine a light through the top? Uh, do I have a light? I already have lights above it, but. First layer seems pretty good. Um, I don't have a separate light I can shine through the top, I don't think. There, actually, let me get the AMS off of it. That might help. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So right now it's inspecting the first layer. Change the residence by removing the AMS. Oh no! Might give access to the camera in a later update. That would be nice. I'm gonna bring that up with them, if they if it's possible to pull a camera feed. Did it purge into the poop chute? It did. Look, guys, it pooped. It pooped. Baby's first poop. <laughs> I 
So yeah, noise wise, it is loud. I'm not gonna lie, this machine is loud, but that's kind of to be expected. It's it's a Core XY fully enclosed printer moving fast. They're, they're not quiet. <laughs> they're not meant to be quiet. I want to build a Voron, but all I could find, I need 500 by 500. All I could find. I'm surprised it was 450 kits because Vorons aren't supposed to go above 350. That's what their design spec is up to is 350. Personally, if you want 500, go with a Rat Rig V Core. Um, how long do you think before some of the people will take DIYers or bleh, wow, I'm reading the sentence backwards. How long do you think uh, until DIYers start taking some of the X1 features to make open source versions? The only real big difference on this machine, remember, this machine is fast for a commercial printer. The actual speeds that it's printing out right now, um, modern Core XY DIY machines have been doing speeds like this for a while now. Look at the speed benchies. So what this has that's different is the auto calibration stuff and the, the LiDAR stuff. That's the new stuff with this. Post it to, yep, I'll post it to Twitter, don't worry. Yeah, when, so this print, I gotta end the stream in about 20 minutes. Um, I gotta head out. Um, little guy's got his graduation from preschool. Um, so follow me on Twitter at 3DP Nero. I will post a picture of this. Um, I'll try to remember to post it on the community for YouTube as well. How big is the machine? Um, 256 millimeters cubed is the volume. So it's about, it's it's the same print volume as a Voron V2, roughly. A little bit more Z. Or 250 Voron V2. And I am going to put this machine on the shelf back here. How many will unselect the gimmicks and just go and print? I don't know. Personally, I, I could see if you run the same filament all the time, if it saves, I don't know if it saves the values, that's the thing. So I don't know if it does a PA tune or if it does the resonance compensation. When it does that, if it saves that value or it, you have to do it every print, otherwise it just doesn't do it. Oh, external dimensions. Um, well, with the spool on the back, the actual, okay, so the machine itself is like, what, 15? It's like 15 and a quarter inches cubed or 15 by 15 by 18. So 15 and a quarter by 15 and a quarter by 18 inches. I don't have a metric tape measure before you can play. Uh, with the spool though, yeah, you're looking at about 20 inches. Printing, like it looks really good. Point VLC if it'll find it. Ooh, I could try that. See if VLC will find it. Media, uh, open network stream, play. I think uh, VLC will uh, will grab it. Yeah, VLC can't play it either. Should get a metric. The thing is, I live in Canada. Majority of Canadians still use Imperial for a lot of stuff, and I live so close to the states, everything's in inches, anyways. Like, I go and buy a two by four at the hardware store. Why fire hazard? Port scan the IP. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> this is just the normal speed. This ain't ludicrous speed. I don't know how to change it to ludicrous. Like I'm, I'm looking at the, the screen here. I don't know where to put Ludic like where it goes to Ludicrous. Like I, I, I don't know where the Ludicrous speed button is. <laughs> I got a little astronaut dude chilling here. So that's about it.
Well, this is printing pretty fast and it's PACF. So honestly, I don't want to print this too fast. Like this is already faster than I normally print PACF. Any updates? It'll be done when it's done. It's in the options tab. Okay, let's take a look here. No, I don't. I don't see it. Oh, there you go. Speed. Okay, now it's in ludicrous speed. Which says it'll be in about an hour. I don't know if you should print PACF at these speeds. Yeah, we're gonna drop this back down. Where did I find that at? Standard. There we go. Okay. Um, I think it's warping. Shoot. I think the print's warping. Uh, pause. Oh yeah, it's warping. Yeah, it's warped. Shoot! Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, one second here. Yeah, it warped. Totally warped. So, actually... like the purge in the back. I don't like it does the purge in the back. That's a bitch to get rid of. There we go. Yep, that worked. But if you're wondering what it looks like. That's pretty shiny. Okay. Stop. I'm just gonna print a cube. Uh, cancel. Okay. I, I want to get something out of NMPACF, so... Prepare. Confirm. So let's just load up a Euro cube. Okay. Uh, it's on my home network. Okay, PACF, blah, 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 blah. Slice. Is what it is. Flip the plate. It's the engineering plate meant for PC. So I'm printing it on the plate meant for PC and PA because that's what it says it's for. Because we are going to print it as it says. The sex bots are here. Hello, sex bots. Goodbye, sex bots. Report. Spam. Goodbye. Preheat. Well, the enclosure will be preheated right now, so. So, you have 14 minutes for the draw. We're going to be doing the draw at exactly 4.30 Eastern. So that's in 14 minutes. Not even 13 minutes. You have 13 minutes. Does it have a chamber thermistor? Um, 
It does. It's currently 37C in the chamber. So yeah, it does. What material is PA? Nylon. PC is polycarbonate. PA is nylon. This machine makes a lot of juddery movements out of nowhere, and it scares the crap out of me, I'll be honest. <laughs> Like the whole purge bucket thing is like... It pooped again! Clipper eyes by Mark III, can I use it within Rage Rabbit? Um, some people are working on that. Ooh. That is some stiff. PC nylon. They didn't solve warping. How would they solve warping? That's not something that's printer dependent. And let's be honest, the the front half of the stealth burner is a um, is a finicky. Honestly, it's a finicky bitch when it comes to warping. Kevin A, thank you for coming a member. Cheers. Ooh, and another poop. So, yeah, so as I said, next Friday, or this Friday, we'll put the AMS on it, we'll do a multicolor print. Uh, what percentage is it? I don't think it says. It just says PACF. It doesn't tell me what percent. It feels like it's like 15 to 25 percent. It's pretty filled. Does it use standard size? It uses a 0.4 nozzle, but they're proprietary nozzles. Yeah, it is a flex plate. It's, it, is, it is a removable flex plate. Will you be tearing it apart? Um, we opened up the back earlier in the stream. There honestly isn't much to tear apart in this machine. The um, there's the the electronics are all in the back, and we took the back plate off to look at them earlier in the stream. And then everything else you can kind of just see from the inside. Like the sides are just sides. So there's three on the bed. Yeah, I'll be fine. Um, I don't know what the Z probe is. It, it is a nozzle probe, so I'm assuming it's some sort of like strain gauge or something. Is the PLA side of the plate see, like it hold up? Uh, we'll see. I've only done one print. We, I mean, folks, folks, we've done a benchy. I don't even know where I put the benchy, but we have done one print on this so far. Yeah, I don't know where the benchy went. <laughs> Boat, little boat, where did you go? I don't know where I put the Benji. Oh, here it is. But I mean, like, we've done this. This is the only thing we've gotten off the printer so far. <laughs> so. Um, so that weird vibrating, is it using the, um, basically the LiDAR, apparently, to like confirm the Z or something. I don't know. The LiDAR is used for calibrating flow. It uses a nozzle for Z offset. Oh, it uses piezos in the bed to measure when it hits? Okay. 
The reason I don't want a 3D printer is because it hurts it. The 3D printers that burn down houses are people that bought like extremely shitty cheap printers with horrible wiring from AliExpress and Banggood. Or Gearbest back in the day. Like a proper machine, like a properly designed 3D printer is no more dangerous than a toaster. And everyone has a toaster in their house. Uh, how much the replacement? I don't know. It comes with three. It comes with one on the printer, and then um, it comes with two extras. At least mine did. So. Yeah, so I've got two extra ones here. And I don't know what the material... It doesn't... It's it's not like... Um, now what's the sticker? Build tack. It's not build tack. But it's not PEI. I, I don't know what this material is. But apparently it has to be this material for the LiDAR to work. I don't think flex plates will work. I could try it. Like, I could put a flex plate on here and try it. I might. So. You don't keep your toaster on for days on end. No, but your air heater does. Like, if something's hot at 100 degrees and it just stays unmoving at 100 degrees. It's not like it's suddenly going to combust. Put it this way. I've got currently plugged in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 printers in this room. I haven't had to use my fire extinguishers once. Knock on wood. How does it taste? Like metal. I go do the poop thing. No, it does that. I gotta go play around with the slicer. I don't like it does the purge line back there. It's a pain to get off. Yeah, as long as you're using good parts, your printer won't catch fire. Like. Honestly, I think the whole fear of printers burning is a massively overblown thing. And if you look at the printers that have burned, they've all been, for the most part, really cheap, like cheapy ones. Go buy a good printer and it won't be an issue. I got the baby soon, how much per day? Uh, oh, my wife, it, daycare, my wife, I think it's like 40 or $40 a day, I think. And it would be nice when it's $10, but unfortunately when it's $10, um, he won't be, he's in school. So, yeah. Yeah, 8 out of 8s with modified electronics is usually what I've seen. Did you just poop again? Now we're just printing a cube. Yeah, when you when you go to slice, so for those that are wondering, you, you slice the cube or you, you slice whatever it is, right? Prepare. So, you know, there you go, slice. And then when you go to send it to the printer, you can, uh, when you send it, it tell like the printer, it pops up, a box pops up and said, hey, which calibrations do you want to run? And then you pick which ones and then it calibrates it. So if you decide not to, you, when you send the file to the printer to print, you can go, yeah, don't bother calibrating. And it just goes right into printing. So totally jacked up. Thank you for coming to remember. So we got four minutes until the draw. So we're going to do the draw in four minutes and then I got to head out. Uh, see if you can move. To, yeah, let me see if I can.
Yeah, there's a prime volume, but I don't think you can move it. Because it just shows it at the top right. Honestly, I don't think you need the prime. Oh, no, even then, it, it still shows it there. Unless it... Custom. Okay, so... I don't know. Turn it off. I don't think you need a prime. Like, honestly, I, th I think the priming is pretty redundant on this thing. Because it does all these little moves up front here and then it purges right before. So I don't think priming is too uh, required on this printer. Oh, I, uh, Lee Smith, I don't have a bot for the giveaway, just it's in the description. Which we are going to be doing that very soon, so. How many people have entered? 810 people have entered. Jeez. Uh, do you think 300? Actually, here's the problem. The problem with this printer, and this is something that's inherent to all printers like this, it's rods. You are limited when you have rods for your accesses because you cannot support rods mid-span. So the longer the span, the more likely the rods are gonna droop in the middle. It is a thing. Um, my very first printer that I built was a Voron V 1.5 at 300 by 300 on the XY, and it drooped. It's, it's an issue they suffer from. So, could you go to 300 with this machine? Maybe. Um, you, the machine would be slower. And you'd have drooping issues. Also, they bounce. There's like bouncing to them. No. No. Ten Hut. Link in the description to enter for the draw. Uh, run the finger over and see if there's any dust. Um, I will after the print ends. Blank, hurry up. You've got one minute to enter the draw. Link in the description. But a carbon, every material will droop over a distance. Every material will droop over a distance once you load it. Believe me. Yeah, there's no perfectly stiff material in the world. Also, the longer span, when you have a nozzle that is used to activate your Z, that flex will make it so you're not going to get consistent readings as well. Yeah, giveaway time. Uh, so how many people have entered the draw? 853 people have entered. Um, I'm going to wait till 854 and close it off. We'll, we'll give one person one more chance who hasn't entered yet. Oh, 859. Okay, too many people. <laughs> Create the list. So how this is going to work, uh, for those that don't know, every stream we do a giveaway. We give away a spool of filament from Polymaker, so shout out to Polymaker. Link in the description if you want to go get some printer food from them. They got some pretty good stuff. Um, but if you win, you'll get an email from me with a form. You fill it out, you'll get a spool of filament, filament within a couple days to about three weeks. Depends on where you live in the world. Who is that? Okay, somebody entered as their name as I Love Dinosaurs, Let's Go Burn Down the Post Office. Okay. I'm like copying all the names in that. Merv, 10, cheers. Thanks for the feed, Nero 3D. Cheers. Hope you enjoyed it. This is a fun stream. And again, Friday. Friday, right right now I'm just waiting for the wheel of names to load up. Friday, we'll put the AMS on here and we'll do some multicolor stuff. So in the meantime, um, working, I think we're good. Um, must be one of the sex bots. Yeah, one of the sex bots entered. Um, so this is Bamboo Lab Carbon. What serial number do I have? I don't know, I think I have a serial number. Printer, 41. I think I have printer number 41. So it's the X1 carbon. I need a number between one and 41. Somebody give me a number between one and 41 because that's how many times we're gonna shuffle this. 
This will affect the winner. Forty. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And do 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Um, somebody was asking if I was blocking it on purpose. No, um, the reason I'm blocking it is because this is what it looks like on the camera I have in front of it with it blocked. And this is what it looks like when it's not blocked. I'm blocking the light so the, the close up camera can actually see what the hell is going on. That's why we're doing that. So, actually, since the stream's over, anyways. You can see it in all its glory. Okay, let's do this draw. Big winner, big winner, big winner. Round it, round it goes. Where it stops, some random computer algorithm already knows. F. Don't say F. Don't scare me like that. Raspberry! Raspberry. Congratulations, Raspberry 2.0. Better better than Raspberry 1.0, but not good as Raspberry Pi, because we don't know where Raspberry Pi is. If, if you've seen a Raspberry Pi, please tell me. Congratulations, Raspberry. You're going to get a draw from me, or a, an email from me once the stream ends. So let me collect your information. And you will get an email from me. Sweet. So let's wrap up the stream here. Um, so initial impressions are pretty good. Um, the machine seems pretty dang solid. Um, as you saw, we literally just took it out of the box, set it up. Um, initial setup was pretty simple. Um, we had to take out the AMS, but I do like how everything shipped in one unit. Um, build quality is pretty good. We took the back off. Um, all the electronics seem pretty well laid out. I don't foresee any issues with, you know, nothing looks like, nothing feels bad. Like if, if I were to see this machine in the store, and I looked at it and be like, yeah, that, this is a pretty good machine. Like it, it's, it, I'm not gonna, Mac-esque in 3D printer terms, um, but compared to other commercial offerings, you know, like when you compare it to like, urgh, something like this, there's a bit of a difference in, uh, in tiers. Um, it's a different tier of machine. Um, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It depends. It really depends. Um, but the machine itself, initial impressions are good. I'm going to print on it for a while, obviously. I'm going to talk more about it on Friday, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Friday, we're going to put the AMS on it, and we'll do some multicolor stuff. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to end it there, because i got to go get a little guy at daycare, and it's his graduation today, so woo! You know, he's not done. It's just they do a preschool graduation for the class that's going to be in school in September. So yeah, so congratulations again to the winner of the Polymaker filament and shout out to Polymaker for sending those spools for the giveaway. Uh, shout out to Bamboo Lab for sending this unit for testing, evaluation, and review. Um, again, I will be doing a full review on this in a couple weeks. I need some time on it. And again, I'm going to be looking at this machine as a printer that prints. I'm not going to be looking at it modification, tweaking. I'm not going to be looking. I'm looking at it. I, I'm going to be using their profiles, their settings, just printing with it. And we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, so for everyone who showed up, thank you. Um, because this was the most viewed stream I've had to date. Hey, maybe we could break that number on Friday with the AMS. Um, for anyone who donated to the stream, became members of the channel, or donated memberships to those that aren't members of the channel, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do and create the content I create without your continued support. You make this all possible, so you're awesome. For everyone else, I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you learned something new. Uh, it's Tuesday, so unfortunately, you still got a few more days of work before the weekend. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there. See you Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Enjoy the rest of your week. Cheers.